it's I, Rob, once more. And welcome to a kind of an offshoot of Card and Board. We will mostly be concentrating on games. But there are various kinds of games out there. Uh, not all of them competitive. For example, my solo play of Massive Darkness. Not competitive, except for against you know myself, wanting to beat the game. Um, but there are other kinds of, of games out there that uh, sometimes don't have to have anything to do with rules. Some of them are just intrinsic pieces of human nature. The earliest form of, for example, uh, games that came out uh, involved gambling. And sure, I know that most gambling has rules, but gambling, by definition, is allowing an element of chance to determine an outcome that either benefits or uh, costs the participant. So, in which case, many versions have some element of skill. Uh, as a child, my first in, uh, encounter with gambling uh, was uh, collectible card games. How is that gambling? Well, every time you get a pack, there's a random chance that something in that pack is going to be beneficial to your collection. It's a gamble. Will it be full of cards that you already have and therefore next to useless to you, especially if you don't have a lot of trade partners? It's a gamble. And uh, I had a couple of sets that I gambled and uh, and picked up. Of course, it's since it's not seen as gambling, there's nothing wrong with children doing this, but it's a very real uh, form of the gambling addiction, the, the compelling need to collect, to gather complete sets. Some people don't feel this, but I certainly did. And I spent a lot of my money as a young man, uh, you know, collecting all kinds of cards. I have Magic the Gathering cards, I have cards from probably about 20 different collectible card games. Before that, I was collecting uh, games or cards based on uh, the X-Men and Marvel franchises, um, which I s still have. Uh, some nice art on them, some interesting things in the stories behind the characters. Um, I didn't have a comic shop, so I could get those in the gas station or the, uh, the Ben Franklin Five and Dime in my town. Um, but I couldn't get, like, comic books, so that was how I would find out about characters and stories, were through those cards. And there were a, ver uh, there were a fair number of different cards that I, I collected. But then when I got into collectible card games, it became a mania. I spent way too much on, on several series, most notably Magic the Gathering. These days, I've weaned myself off of collectible card games. My desire to collect and own role-playing games and accessories for my role-playing games is unfortunately still a thing. And I've been gathering games both to entertain you, the followers who uh, enjoy this channel, as well as ones that I think my family and friends will enjoy. My collection of Munchkin cards, where I'd stack all of them now, probably be about a good three-foot stack of just the door cards. Treasure cards would probably be about two and a half feet. Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> so at any rate, uh, as a long-winded introduction, um, the collectible cards, uh, even if there's no game attached, still a form of gambling. And as a form of gambling, gambling is a game, and therefore it's covered. A little loose tangent, but bear with me. So I was uh, at a store called The Exclusive Company in West Bend, Wisconsin. And uh, I was going through, looking around at various things of interest. I really didn't think about anything for this channel. And I saw a huge bin full of cards. Not loose cards. Packs of cards. Packs of trading cards. And uh, <laughs> I found uh, a lot of the... Toxic Crusader animated cartoon cards. And it was like a bunch for a buck. As a matter of fact, it was like ten for a buck. 
So I got a couple other sets of other another series. If you guys think this is entertaining or engaging at all, I tried doing this once before with uh, Omnis Critic videos, and it fell flat because Omnis Critic is a character. So he was judging the art, and, and honestly, that's not where these kind of things really fall in. This is not high art, but it can be fun to go through and look at these things from the past. And if you're willing to take that trip with me, I'm more than willing to open up these packs of cards, show you what I've got. And I do have a friend who likes the trauma films, including the Toxic Avenger. He'll probably end up getting the cards if, unless somebody in my audience collects these kind of cards and has an interest for a couple to fill out their collections. I, I can feel if you are. Uh, missing a few cards for something obscure, the odds of something like this coming up, yeah. Uh, but since that is extremely remote, I'm probably not going to hold on to these cards for very long. So, I believe these even have, like, bubblegum in them or something, which is going to be disgusting. Uh, so, anyhow, these were done by Panini, which name I've seen before for cheap crank out cards. This isn't Tops we're dealing with here. Uh, and the copyright date is 1991 from Troma Incorporated. So, well, I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to open these cards and let you see what they are, and we'll enjoy it together. Eh? Hopefully, that you can live vicariously through me opening them, and we'll both see them for the first time together. So, through the magic of cameras. All right, here we have the back of my trusty game mat. As I'm hoping that this will avoid glare. And uh, we're going to see how this works. So, the first pack. All that air from 1981. Oh, that's not pleasant. Alright, well, let's try opening it from the back. One of the things about collector's cards from the past is that maybe unopened packs have a value, but you can't tell if you have anything really good unless you've opened it up. I didn't damage the card at all, did I? Nope. Okay. So here we have a card with Toxie, but it looks unfinished. It looks like half of a picture. So either this was miscut or it's meant to sandwich in with another picture. We'll keep an eye out. And we have 129, the Toxic Avenger. To, to collect these stickers in the album available from your local shop. Not anymore, it isn't. Okay, so these are stickers. Oh my gosh. Maybe I won't give these to Dave. Maybe I'll just stick them on things. That could be amusing. Let's see, here's Taxi with his mop throwing a glob of something. Is there anything on them? Well, the language on it looks German. So these are German cards, better yet. Uh, it just looks like a reprint of what's written in English. Collect these stickers in the album available from your local shop. So, so this is 74, 129. Oh my gosh. How did you miss the 80s with that fabulous pink jacket and shoulder pad? Crazy spiky hair. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Sadly, these cards don't give any context, names of the characters. I don't recall ever really seeing the cartoon because it looked kind of trash when I was growing up. So I was in... When that came out, I was probably a sophomore in school. and Yeah, I don't remember it. There's Toxie with some of his Crusaders. They look all fairly dopey. That's the way this com cartoon went. So, they all had some sad superpower that let them on the team. Uh, this looks like uh, trees marching in on them. 
So these are probably all cell shots from uh, a clip of the actual cartoon. This guy looks like a Baxter Stockman ripoff from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So if they're all stickers. They're in no particular order. I'm curious to see if there is a second half of this one. I want to see if 130, if I can lucky enough to find it, uh, has that. So we're going to tear open another one. We'll let you listen to the sweet sound of tearing waxed paper. And to be fair, this waxed paper did a pretty good job. These uh, stickers are probably still viable. And outside of the very front one, they're all held together pretty well. The front finish sticks to the paper a little bit. Oh, smog in a can. Gosh, I can't believe that product isn't successful today with some rat guy. Again, I didn't see this, uh, this cartoon, so... Uh, if any of you did and have information, that would be great, but this isn't a commentary about the, the trauma cartoon. This is more about just taking a look at some new stuff. Number 181. I wonder if you collected them all, if it would tell the story. Probably would. Uh, but you would have to go into detail and maybe watch the cartoon that it's based off of to get the details. So, guy standing alone outside of an auditorium, looks like. 180, oh, 180 and 181 together. Ooh, that's exciting. At least for a little bit. Right, two stuck together a little. Uh, we've got, uh, looks like two orcs, two orc troubadours. If they're ugly, they're probably thugs. If they're uglier than the heroes are, and that takes a lot. So they look shifty. 116. And then we have attack helicopters with powdery pink. Those could be incoming missiles. Those could be giant dandelions. I don't know. This cartoon is very strange. Ooh, 97 or 96. Yeah, it doesn't really tell us much. It doesn't tell much of the story. Oh, well, this is kind of nice. This actually might be a nice... Well, somebody's hanging from the tree, and there's a couple of people standing there looking. Interesting. 143. Basically all by itself. 162. This is... Uh-oh. Two-tone hair girl is yelling at man with warts. Kind of what would happen if Perry White let himself go from Spider-Man fame but dyed his hair and then got warts. And you gotta love the two-tone background too. That's 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 nice. Alright, so we'll go to another set of card stickers. I swear when I got them I did not know they were stickers. The fact they're stickers actually adds a ton of value to them for me. So, oh, here's Toxie and a dog, and they seem happy while paratroopers are coming in. Okay. Okay. 184. Okay. So, we've got... Uh, the Flintstones Kazoo's evil brother uh, talking to... I don't know what to make of that guy. I really am not sure. Is that a breathing mask he's got on? That seems appropriate considering the theme of these things. But... Wearing a pipe organ on his back. Eh, I'll give them credit. At least they make interesting looking villains. They've got some eye appeal. Oh, and his his back organ toots. 
this guy might have something to do with that smog in a can, honestly. So it looks like these are... And how many sets of arms does he have? Did he have multiple arms in that other one? Oh, sure he did. I didn't even notice. Now look at that. He's got three arms there. So yes, maybe he's uh, Spider-Man's dorkier looking incarnation with man spider. Four arms. Don't know. Kind of hard to tell. Not sure if I want to tell, honestly. And here's a sludge monster. Sludge, sludge is a great, you know, theme within Toxic Avengers, so obviously under control of the bad guy and all of his arms. This is all late in the show, I'm assuming. No, that's 51. Uh, that's so much with that. And then we have... Hmm. Somebody viney tying up a muscle guy. Bad guy attacking a good guy. I really wish they had something on the back of these stickers to give these pictures some context, but they don't. The only thing I can do is try to put them in order when we're done and see if they lead us to anything. Maybe we'll walk down that road together. Oh, here we are. Person with ability to see through hair that's good enough to justify wearing glasses that are that have hair in front of them. An angry looking red haired person looking at paper. Not exactly an action shot. Those glasses though. Ooh. Okay. Little, little Tiffany lamp back there. Alright, that's three packs of these cards. Let's go to pack four. Again, the merry sound of tearing going on here. And... These are coming out a lot easier now. Okay, we have... Uh, upside down shot. There we go. That explains it. Uh, doghouse before and after, it looks like, with somebody in it. I don't know what to make of this. But, yeah, okay. Lots of boxes behind the doghouse. 135, it's in the middle of this, it seems. Okay, people looking at big screen with... Come on, focus. There we go. Looking at big monitor, probably evil people. The guy with the pipe organ on his back and somebody else sinisterly watching Toxie on the screen. He's not really the Toxic Avenger in these. He's Toxie. He's, he's nice. Um, kind of oafish, but good heart and all that. Looks like these are the Toxic Avengers at a picnic. There's a Flintstones-like palm tree there going on. Looks like they're humorously trying to set up a camp. That would be my take on that picture. In the desert somewhere? Happy people! There are happy people here. No clue if any of them are important to the story. They are just happy people. Yay. Is this at the end so we know this is a happy ending? 178, it's close to the end, yeah. Okay, then we have the big reveal, pulling off the pink cloth. There's a lot of pink going on. Macoop 83. Magoop. Magoop 83 with yeah, evil looking people in the background. The big plan being revealed, I'm guessing? I don't know. This was in 91, so 83 doesn't tell me much about what's going on here. Uh, coming out of the danger room is two... Our two evil-looking guys, one with a pink lay. And you can see his bones, his rib cage. He looks a little bit, very little bit, like the ghoul from um, Darksiders. 
uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, unfortunately. The other guy looks kind of like a chunky orc from the 60s. He even has a little groomsh eye thing going on and a, like a fangs on his lay. And it looks like they're stepping through a portal or out of a portal or something. I don't know. I really don't know. The, uh, the guy on the left definitely looks a lot flashier, though. The guy on the right is definitely a ghoul of some sort. All right, that's 117. And now we're going to the last pack of these. Now that I know there's stickers, I'm kind of regretting only having bought the five packs. Yeah, maybe we'll go back there. Let's pick up some more. They had a lot. <laughs> they had a large cooler full of them, if I remember right. They had a variety of different other cards. I also picked up a couple other cards, which I will reveal in a future episode. Ooh. Ooh, this one's a quarter of a picture. Good luck getting all the other ones for that, but yes. Oh, yeah, pouring out toxic waste. Yeah, that's, that's so toxic Avenger. And he's got black crosses on yellow. Hmm. Okay. Some sort of vehicle, vehicle, a truck he's pulling it off of, looks like. Interesting. And, again, so much pink. So very, very much pink. A uh, person attacking Toxie who uh, looks surprised. If I had a guy in pink, you know, like a pink hockey uh, outfit jumping out at me, I'd probably be surprised too. So then we have a person pulling a switch and then stuff is happening. And since he's got three arms, we're guessing it is Pipe Organ Boy. And it looks like he's creating a portal. So this must be his big portal machine. That explains the exotic frame around it. So, okay. Ah, here's another half picture. Uh, again, likelihood of finding the other half not so good. It looks like a thug. Or, you know, since they're Toxic Avengers, he might be one of the good guys. It's kind of hard to tell. Just standing there with his back to us all. And he's got vines and stuff coming out of him, so... That doesn't necessarily mean he's good, but I think that might be Toxy in the background, so. Um, okay. No doubles. That makes me happy. I don't think I've seen a double. And tractor beam? Suppression field? It's one of those attack choppers we saw earlier, so. It's probably not good for the good guys. And it looks like there's some sort of waste pipe in the background, so. It's very orange. It's it's jarring after all the pink we've been seeing. <clears throat> and then another pink scene with Toxy uh, addressing a guy in vivid pink pants and a ponytail. Um, in what looks like a hair salon, maybe? Uh, the nice ferns in the, hanging ferns in the back, but, yeah, again, no context doesn't tell us a whole lot. So, what I'm going to do now, really quickly, is I'm going to go through all the cards, I'm going to sort them out in order, and then I'm going to, so you're not seeing them in my hands all shaky and everything, I'm going to put them out and reveal them one at a time, and we're going to try to weave a story for all of this. Won't that be fun? So, bear with me for just one instant of the internet. All right, let's tell a story with these in chronological order, numerically, from the, what we can tell. We're going to be a little tongue-in-cheek here. Let's see. Alright, 
They're now in order. Let's see if we can't turn these into a story. And we were lucky enough, several of them are in direct serial, so that might help us a little bit figure out what we're going to see. But let's tell the best story we can, shall we? First of all, aliens came to Earth, and they were beaming up anybody they could with their giant tractor cone of doom. The first place they went to apparently was some sort of a drainage ditch. Then, pink-shirted hockey players attacked Toxic Avenger, also uh, rocking the awesome orange shirt. Um, and looks like he got his mop for his effort. That was observed on ESPN on the big screen by evil pipe organ man and his friend. Um, no seats, unfortunately. It doesn't look like any snacks either, so... They were just enjoying it for the fun of it. Then, Thrasher Pink Jacket Guy came in. Apparently, he took Ben 10's uh, wrist thing for his belt. He's wearing a padlock on his chest. That's always a, a choice of the, the tougher elite. And uh, the bifork mohawk thing going on is, uh, is pretty rocking, too. But he has spikes on his shoulder pads, so you know he means business. And uh, the henchmen sent to go after Toxic Avenger, no doubt. So here we have Pink Jacket Guy being cuddled by vines, probably from the plant-loving Avenger of the Toxic Variety. Cuddle times. Which leads Pipe Organ Man to summon a sludge monster. That always works well. Sledge Monster goes out and is not seen again. Uh, in rea response, this guy decides he's dumping all this toxic stuff because he's had enough. Clearly, this is the posture of a man who's defeated, and his only goal is revenge by dumping toxic sludge. Of which, Toxic Avenger creates a grenade and chucks it over his bunker of potatoes. Which leads him to go to a hair salon to meet Frenchy, his friend, uh, who does does the hair, uh, complete with the, the 80s, 90s uh, ponytail and uh, some sort of a crumpled beret. To uh, Even though he's got his fist, he's bro-fisting. They're not fighting. He's, he's, he's getting ready to greet him with a good bro-fist. They're happy. And then, oops, side. Uh, this is, again, Major Plant Guy. Uh, he is a colonel in the corn, um, and he is looking at the big meeting between Toxic Avenger and his hairstylist. Um, not much going on there. Operation Crop Duster, as these helicopters uh, are dusting some giant dandelions. That's clearly what they're doing, is dropping uh, uh, fertilizer. I'm sure it's fertilizer. Probably toxic fertilizer, but fertilizer. And the very excited Sally Jesse Raphael stand-in is, yeah, most of you don't even remember who that is anymore, I suspect, uh, revealing the campaign for Magoop 83, even though this is copyrighted in 91. This is, a, this is a documentary. This is a historical documentary. For those who don't remember the Magoop uh, bid for political office. Um, then the Toxic Avenger decides to read the letter he got from home to all of his friends who liked it, and they all got mailed to it at uh, Camp Toxic Avenger. So that's a heartwarming moment, we see, which is nice. And at Camp Toxic Avenger, of course, they have uh, camp counselors who are going for the luau thing, uh, including Orc Chest Girl, um, guy, it's hard to tell. Um, so that's 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 kind of actually nice, and all of a sudden we we find out that the guy with the mohawk is undead, the 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 bifork mohawk, um, but their their lays are still very nice, the orc lay on the right on the left and uh, undead lay on the right, so yeah okay, uh, coming out of the danger portal, because all camps really have a danger portal, whether they advertise it or not. Uh, then we have Toxie, who is on his raft. Looks like it's a pontoon of sorts. Of course, we don't have the other half of this. 
but it looks like he's doing okay. He's kind of got a grim smile on his face, and it's a nice sunset. So this this is that's that's a nice one. That's that's for fun. And now they're camping. They're they're going for their survival badges. Uh, it doesn't look like things are going excellently for uh, Taxi, uh, but the others look like they've got tents set up, and they're probably going to roast some marshmallows and some hot dogs. And then the weird stuff started happening, because in an instant, this person who's stuck in a doghouse, Juneyard, sure, uh, all of a sudden goes from a night scene to day scene with all these crates and boxes around for no apparent reason. Or maybe that was lightning. Hard to say. Then we go on to the uh, taxi and his friends seeing a person who's hung from a tree, and there was much. They were, they were, there was. It was delightful. And then this woman is yelling at uh, uh, again, gone to seed Perry White. Um, maybe it's his wife. Who knows? And here she is going over with his secretary over the finances and finding out exactly where he's been funneling that hush money off to. So Perry White is in danger at this point. And we're back to pipe organ guy who is, he has clenched his fists and he is now again watching Toxie. He's got a real obsession with Toxie and his friends. Uh, that's what he does. He just sits there and watches them. And his, 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 back hookah is is going I don't know this is some strange elements going on here uh, and smog in a can with ratty McRat face um, that is uh, clearly uh, a product that uh, that that's got a lot of a lot of market ability um, can't get enough smog the people are happy to see smog in a can they're they are delighted for the smog in a can so yay then we've got a military barracks type building or some sort of a hangar and there's a lot of people in front of it and there's a lot of trees here on the sidewalk and street so these trees are clearly confused they were at the wrong show they were probably supposed to be at uh, Captain Planet or something one lone sad guy with a bunch of baggage carts from the airline standing by a dumpster kind of one of those shots that's always on the roll you've got this weird shot of nothing in particular and not sure who took it or you know how that shot got there and nobody really cares about it and you throw it away that's kind of what happened there uh toxy standing there on the day that the paratroopers dropped with his dog friend and they're all happy it's everybody's happy um the, the people are the people are, are coming down it's good um nothing, nothing more to see there really and then the uh, the ghost of Kazoo, again from Flintstones, a little Martian guy, is there with Pipe Organ Man. You can tell he's evil because he's got a white streak in his hair. And he's got a, uh, a set of shoulder pads that would make most of your 80s uh, villains blush. Uh, I'm thinking of Mesmeron from the Pac-Man cartoon. Yeah, they, he also was rocking the, the shoulder pauldrons. Uh, and ridiculous collar combination thing. So yes, uh, you know, a little villainly chat. And there's a kazoo clone stand-in ghost uh, getting juiced. Stickers are a little slick. So yeah, he's getting the power. Nintendo power. And then he pulls the lever and opens the portal to the end credits of the story, I guess. After he sends his little buddy home. Um, really don't have anything else going on here. Just kind of a weird closing shot, so. All right, that is the story that these Toxic Avenger stickers have given us after all these years. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane. And again, if you collected these stickers, or if you were interested in those uh, leave comments like if you aren't subscribed I'm gonna keep doing things like this uh, just 
you know, random card stuff that I find uh, interests me. It's fascinating to me. So if you like it, I hope you continue on this little journey. Thank you for watching. I really enjoy doing this. And I hope you have a wonderful day and many, many successful adventures. Farewell.